all that there is little else other than pride at stake. Just look around this ground. And Russell Smith is the man in the middle. Fantastic atmosphere. Every seat sold, every seat taken in this McAlpine Stadium. And we're about to get underway. The last 80 minutes of Rugby League on Sky Sports Live this year. And what a way to finish the third test between the two old enemies. Can Great Britain get over the top of them this time? Australia will kick off, they'll attack in the green and gold from right to left. Darren Lockyer gets us underway. 80 minutes to the end of the season. Chris Radlinski is underneath it. First drive forward is by Adrian Morley. Playing tonight with number 10 on his back. The same number, of course, he had in the first test when he lasted just 12 seconds. He's been on the field a little longer already tonight. Here's the captain, Farrell, met by Robbie Kearns and Badiris in quickly in the tackle. Interesting to see there, Farrell. He's obviously going to be utilised out wide. And they're going to use the forwards pretty strongly. Won't do much uh, out of the unusual, Eddie, in the opening 10. That's a poor That's a poor kick. And it Nobody was from knows. Terry Newton, and it was straight down the throat of Darren Lockyer. And I know that the British have been talking for months before this series, and indeed throughout the course of this series, do not kick straight to Darren Lockyer. And sadly, we have done that every week. Well, that's a reason why I think that we uh, lost the first test. Kicking game was woeful, especially in that first half. Badiris at dummy half. Kim Morley back on the inside. It goes to Kearns, and he's caught one from Terry. And play on, has. no, the medics are on quickly, yes it is play on, says the referee. Now he will hold the clock up as Kearns receives treatment. Well, no doubt about it, he's made contact and he's made it pretty tough. What a criticism by the Australian camp about Terry Newton. Well, his, his tactics in the first test at the his, JJB Stadium. Indeed so. His tackling style was criticised by the Australians. They were looking at one stage for video evidence to try and get him brought up in front of the disciplinary committee for an off-the-ball incident with Fitzgibbon in well, that first test. But that is high. No doubt, in my mind. And that is an attack straight into the face. Well, there's one guy in the green and gold. It's Robbie Cairns that will remember this test series. In the first 12 seconds of that first test at Wigan. Chris Anderson is very concerned, a little shake of the head, he's not impressed. And there is a stretcher being called for. And the referee has asked, I think, for a word with Terry Newton. Well, surely they'll put this on report. Well, at the very least. That was very late, swinging arm. Some of the arms certainly went on to the shoulder but the impact was there and, and it's there for all to see he's not well is Robbie Kearns he caught a beauty in the first 12 seconds in from Adrian Morley you'll deal with the player please David wait I'll deal with that we'll deal with the it's quite uh, yeah. calm oh sorry gents sorry well, rightly so, the medics were very quickly on to get to Robbie Kearns, and you might have just heard in the background Russell Smith saying that the incident will be going on report, and the penalty will be going to Australia. Have a little look where I was stood, have a little look who was stood in front of me. And the referee has stood in the middle of the field, and I can tell you that he was looking straight at the big screen, and he also asked for the match commissioner to take a look and maybe have a word with him in the ear to let him know just how bad the tackle was. But as you say, Steve-O, Robbie Kearns will remember this Matt test series and sadly for all the wrong reasons. Yeah. And let's hope that uh, the young set will be OK. That's the most important factor about it, never mind about the game itself. But he's on his feet. Well, that's, that's great news. That is a great news. Uh, great for please. Australia as well. For a high tackle. He's going he to was walking Australia. around in a daze when uh, when that's Morley got to him. Okay. For many that's minutes. It. And the referee has done the right thing. Well, that could have a repercussion for Wigan at the start of next year. Especially with the fact that it was the Australians that wanted to cite him 
because of his tackling technique. And it wasn't good. Well, very interesting that. Russell Smith. He places it on report. And Steve Gans watching from the sideline. Wonder what thoughts are going through his mind at that moment. The opening minute of a test match again and an incident involving a British player. Ganson produced the red card after advice for Adrian Morley and Russell Smith has placed the incident on report. Repke is picked up and dragged back, 10 metres away from the line, the Aussies. Kim Morley feeds it wide to Rickardson and that has been picked up by Richard Hall. They were looking for Michael De Vere, and Horn got the interception. Took a gamble there, came away from the whitewash. He was in no man's land there, was Richard Horn. But went for the gamble, it paid off. Well, I'll tell you, that incident involving Newton and Robbie Kearns has spiced up what was already a fiery encounter in prospect. Oh, don't leave your seats. This is going to be one rough, tough game. Newton gets the ball away to Andrew Farrell. And he is grounded just 10 metres inside his own half by Rickardson's tackle. It's the last. And so Deacon eventually will get the kick in downfield. That's a better kick in between the winger Matsing and Darren Lockyer. And it allows the British chase to close the winger down. Oh, Newton was in. Well, the hook and is Morley not... was in. The hook is oh, not Newton's gone the... down. Newton's got to Newton's it. Gone down. And tough night. Well, someone went looking. Here's Fitzgibbon. And they found him. More, uh, nice Newton is back in the defensive gets line first. now. Fitzgibbon gets to his feet. And I believe it might have been the elbow, Steve, of Adrian Morley that actually caught Terry Newton. But Newton went down like a sack of spuds. Here is Steve Simpson on the last tackle. Bye, bye. This is Kamali with the kick under pressure from Deakin. Good kick too. And it is allowed to bounce by Hall and bounces out of play. Well, what happened to Terry Newton? Well, he's on the second marker there. Watch him. Yes, it was Morley's elbow. All I saw was Morley, uh, Newton rather flat out. I thought someone had got him. Well, someone tried to push him out. And then as he turned, Morley just uh, clipped him. Wait! Jason. Well, he's got his number, and they know it's number nine. This is Mike Forshaw. And this will boil over, Eddie. You can sense it. It's an important facet now. Which side wants to concentrate more on the game plan? If they lose the control, start going out to hit the opposition, give away silly penalties. Well, that, unbelievably, was Stuart Field. Oh, no, it was Paul Scholfield. Thank you, pardon. Skullfort with the kick. How much pressure applied to uh, the standoff, Paul Skullfort, who would be the first to admit, I feel, that he has not Big had five, a good series so five, far. Please. I, I yes. get the impression he, he came into the series injured, and he, he has not been at his best. Tonight, we need him. Well, Great Britain lost the opening test by four and three-point margins. They have been described by Darren Lockyer as the toughest British side he's ever faced. That will be scant consolation, those words, if they lose here. Five minutes of the test match gone. Petro Sivanasiv is on. News of Robbie Kearns, Chris Sporrer. Yeah, obviously, uh, we saw there quite clearly Robbie Kearns uh, was, was knocked out. He was in Disneyland for about a minute. And he's got concussion. Uh, but somehow... Uh, He's hopeful of coming back onto the bench. A miraculous recovery. Uh, he is a tough customer. I do know that for a fact. This is Brian Carney. What a test series this fellow has had. Oh, the pass was to Farrell, who had his back to the play. He did well to retain possession. And what's more, he's on the break. Farrell, tackled by Lockyer. Quick play the ball. That's what's needed. There it is to Newton. Oh, and Webke gets in his way. He's going to be offside, Webke. He'll play the advantage with Forshaw. Very quick thinking from the hooker, Terry Newton. He's realised he no, made no attempt to get back onto the 10. And as soon as you made the contact there, that's where the penalty should be awarded. Fair play by Russell Smith. Wanted to see if the 
be any advantage. And as soon as you contact there, it had to be the penalty. Shane Webke, one of Australia's greatest ever prop forwards. A little bit slow to get back in the defensive line there, and uh, Terry Newton touched him twice. That was the end of it, really. The referee allowing the advantage to see if anything developed in terms of a try for Great Britain when it didn't, brought them back for the penalty. And uh, <coughs> Paul Deacon here has the opportunity. He needs just one point, by the way, for 400 in all matches this year. This is a golden opportunity for Deacon, first of all, to reach that margin, but more importantly tonight, to give Great Britain a two-point lead. And all the players are supposed to be 10 metres away from this kick, and they're about five. He sent them back once, and they've crept forward again. And they're moving forward now as Deacon takes this kick. Doesn't pull him off, though. First two points of the test match for the British. By the boots of Paul Deacon. That will calm the nerves. And Luke Rickardson, meanwhile, is uh, receiving treatment inside his own quarter as Deacon celebrates the first points of this third Think Road safety test. More importantly, from a personal point of view, the 400 points in all matches this year for the Bradford Bulls scrum half. Deep kickoff. Sculpt underneath. Gives it then to Stuart Fielder. Fielder will run it back. Rickardson, by the looks of things, number 13 there, involved in the tackle, is okay to carry on. Scott again, grounded by big hit from Webke and also Sivanasiva. Newton to Farrell, who will drive it forward again. I must say, Russell Smith, the official having devil of a job getting both sides back. The required 10. That was a swinging arm. They've got Morley. And Morley offside, but uh, boy, they went looking for Adrian Morley. They didn't miss him either. Oof, straight on to it. Steve Simpson had him all lined up. Australia with possession from the scrum with their captain Darren Lockyer. Good tackle by Chris Radlinski. Scampering into dummy half is Craig Wing. Here is Craig Fitzgibbon. And Craig Fitzgibbon drilled to the ground by Jamie Peacock and also Martin Gleeson. Badiris gets it away again to Wing. Good defence. Get square, hold. Pretty solid. And out of the blocks there you can see the wide shot. Oh, they went high again. It was a good hit, though, by Fielden. You probably heard the official Russell Smith saying to Terry Newton, don't swing it. This is Webke. Eventually he falls. 18 metres from the British line. Badiris is there. Here is Kimali. There's the cross-field kick. And that's far too deep. Very poor indeed. Probably the, the worst kick. During the entire series, exciting player, Brett Kamali. To me, he's been the difference between the two sides. So creative. Problems for Shane Webke as Morley drives it forward, halted by Michael Devere and Rickardson and Simpson. Webke is hurt as this British attack develops to halfway. Big prop forward will take a breather on the side by the looks of things. And they're going down like nine pins. Go, 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 and go, it's go. pretty tough out go, there. Quickly. Great Britain quite happy just to use the forwards, try to suck in this Australian defence. Australia with both first-choice prop forwards now off the field, Dunn's and Webke. Well, we saw in the second test, a little kick over the top. It's a high one on this occasion, far too long. Way, way deep from Paul Sculthorpe. Danny, make it 10 metres, not nine. We're completely it's... off target there. You can't blame the wind either, Steve-O, because it's absolutely it still here in Huddersfield tonight. Here's Willie Mason. Willie Mason, number 15, making his seventh cap, trying his first three tests in a row. He hasn't scored now for three. The amazing thing, the amazing thing that uh, Great Britain in possession, remember in the first half last week, the chip over the top created all sorts of problems for this Australian defence. For some unknown reason, we didn't utilise that in the second half, and we have yet to do it in this game so far. This is Crocker. Two tries from Hooker against the French Select 13, start of this European tour. Here is Simpson now for the Aussies. Farrell is there, Newton is there. That's the last tackle, Badiris will find Kimali. And there's the dab down the line, and the invitation for the flying wing. 
Radlinski gets to it and then runs the ball over the dead ball line. He could hear Minicello was closing in on him. Poor kick a few moments ago, but not on this occasion. Well weighted. Reaching all sorts of problems there for Radlinski. The ability of this Australian side to apply that pressure to keep the ball in the in goal area to receive the ball yet again. Consecutive sets of six, it's difficult to keep out. Big crowd here at the McAlpine Stadium, sell out. Every seat gone. And uh, watching here, after 11 and a half minutes, Great Britain with a two point lead. The drop out to Lockyer, and here is Petro Sivanesiva. Drives it forward at uh, Forshaw. Well, Forshaw well, and Field and combine to bring the big man down. Like. Badiris waits at dummy half. Here is Fitzgibbon. Fitzgibbon on the run. Thinks about the offload. Two He's got uh, two men all over him. It Fitz was uh, Farrell and Newton. Badiris. Badiris just delaying. Hands off three. Badrin. Lockyer waits. The captain. Dummy half. Finds Timorley. Here is Luke Rickardson, and Rickardson almost opening him up. Good Gallup tackle Gallup needed, Gallup and it was good from Fielden and Newton. Ten metres away, Kim Morley, Kim Morley to Lockyer, and Lockyer just slips. What a tackle completed, OK, says Russell Smith. Play on, Kim Morley with another dab to the end goal earlier. It's taken out. And has good. to take the ball away from Michael De Vere. Another drop out underneath the sticks. Just spoke about the... Ability of the Kangaroos. Well, that should really have been a penalty. I feel as though Gleeson had him down. Either way, they've got to absorb more pressure. It's, uh, a lot of work in his Chris Radlinski. Second set of six coming up here for the Aussies. Britain have managed to save face three times previously by winning the third test to prevent a whitewash. The last in 1988 in Sydney. 26 12. We were there that day, Steve O. We need... I'll never forget it. No, we'll need something like that tonight. Two, release, get up it. Wait, it's still... Well, when we get into a commanding lead, if we do, we've got to make sure that we can hold on to it. Crocker. Hauled Three down by Morley. He got past field and couldn't get away from Morley. Good scampering run here from Craig Wing. And Britain just hanging off in defence. Eventually, Farrell and Newton get to him on the fourth tackle. Just a bit of hesitation in the Great Britain defence at the moment. Kim Morley fires the ball wide. That's De Beer. Oh, and ball went backwards. It's going to be play on. No, it isn't. It's a knock on. Thought for a moment the referee was saying play on. It was a fearsome challenge, but what a pass again from this man. See how they just hesitate, expecting the kick. Big five, yours is. The hit there from Lee Gilmore. Had to be as well. The shoulder right across the ball carrying arm. No, just your back. Good build up though, Michael Devere. Good build up by the Australians. Luke, Sanderson the will be quite this happy with it. Luke. Not doing anything uh, fancy at the moment. Just utilising the forwards, trialling up. Let him up Looking towards Kamali, just applying that pressure. There's got to be interference, and it is. It's given penalised for a second effort on Martin Gleeson. Great Britain ahead 2 0. Sean McRae, your early views. Well, first 15 minutes, Eddie, I think it's call it a draw, eh? I think uh, one thing's for sure. There's no, uh, no such thing as a dead rubber in a test match. Both sides have come out full of intensity, full of tempo. I've been very impressed with the way that Great Britain are winning the floor at the moment. They probably haven't had a lot of best in, say, the last three or four sets. They've had to defend a couple of repeat sets there, which may tell on them, particularly with that error there for kicking for touch. But at the same time, they, they are winning the floor both offensively and defensively. They've got plenty of numbers in the collision, and when they're going forward, they're getting a fairly quick play of the ball, which, which has enabled Terry Newton a little bit of space at dummy half and giving the, uh, the, the ball runners a little bit of time on the ball. I think it's been a very good start from both sides, a very positive start. Perhaps we haven't seen the lateral movement yet that a lot of people predicted, that sort of relaxed mode where it was going to flow from side to side. Maybe the conditions are having some effect on that. The ball will only get slippery and slipperier, and uh, maybe we'll see some handling errors as the game progresses. Well, Great Britain breathing a sigh of relief here because uh, Deacon missed the touchline with the penalty, and then the Australians, they lost the ball in the tackle. So, even Stephen, it was Michael Crocker, the stand-in, stand-off for the Aussies. It's been Britain's problem, Eddie, is the Guess fact that uh, wait, wait, they get wait. to a point where they look as though they're controlling things, they come up with an error. What oh, a big crunching hit on Andrew Farrell. Australia shading it in terms of possession, Britain ahead on the scoreboard, where it counts. And here is Newton on to Farrell, good hands from Skullthorpe, he was looking for Gilmore. And it's play on, it's the advantage, 
Petro Sivanasiva has it for the Aussies. Well, he couldn't believe it. The big fella just bobbed up in front of him. He thought he was going to be come back for the original knock-on. He's quite happy to make sure that we get open play. But as you can see there, that wide shot. They're having a devil of a job getting back. There's ten. There's not, not much space between them. This is Kimali. Here is Rickardson. Rickardson trying to go around Fielden and Peacock couldn't do so. Badiris with another good scampering run. Oh, and it went without it to Kimali. And it went behind, says Russell Smith. Well, that's a contentious call by the British referee. Lockyer. Oh, and then over the head of Webke. Badiris. Oh, he offloads brilliantly to Crocker. A great tackle needed. And it was a good tackle, too, from Deacon. Here come Australia with Kimali. Bounces off the ankles. Farrell has it back. Under all sorts of trouble there was the Great Britain defence. Didn't know what was happening. A little clip back on the inside. Gilmore in the away. Two. Testing their arm. The Kangaroos. Not the best pass there, Gilmore. Put it down. Offside against Australia. Britain wanting to get on with it quickly. The referee has to make the mark. They made it quite clear before the ball was kicked in this test series. A blow to stop the game and then a blow. That you cannot tap the ball until the referee's on the mark and blows the whistle. Well, that's been the way of it in Super League all year as well. Yeah. Hold it, lads. Hold it, Jen. Britain are up to the halfway line. They have a 3-1 penalty count in their favour this week. It was 8-2 against them last week, of course, at the KC Stadium in Hull. Bit lower, will Again, and, we've oh, yet... that ball has come free, knock on. And, uh, you know, Steve, looking ahead to next year in the Tri-Series, I think you will agree with this call that has gone out over the past couple of weeks. We have to have neutral referees for the Tri-Series. We must do. Well, was it a hand in here from Mason? Yeah, had a little one. And uh, not seen by the officials. Uh, hasn't been around a long time, but he's certainly picking up the, the little crafty tricks, isn't he? Yeah, I, I, I agree with you, Eddie. I think, I think that we've, we've got to make sure that uh, we develop from this game. And that's why it's so important that we actually win this match tonight. Come on. Come ball all the way. Come on. It's with Rickardson and Webke. Oh, he got the ball away, but it was put to ground. And Carney has it for Great Britain. Well, that was an impossible effort there from Webke. Far too much traffic there and tried to offload. Not the best pass on the bounce. It finds its way to Deacon. Here now is Lee Gilmore. Bradford Bulls last year, St Helens next year. And that will please everyone on Elsie Road to see that little run to halfway. And there's a penalty. Crocker hanging on. Teddy, back here. And the crowd don't like it, but uh, it's quite clear. You can't do a thing until the man with the whistle allows you to do it. No doubt about the penalty. Michael Crocker. In for the injured uh, Craig Gower, of course. Interesting to see how Crocker handles the, the pressure tonight. Scott Ball restarts. Here is Adrian Morley. Best forward in the world. And that's the view of the Australians, by the way, Morley. Here's Fielder. That's it all the way through this series. This young man's not far behind him. Newton. Newton finds Paul Scoffball. This is Jamie Peacock, the Man of Steel 2003. Grandy, 10 metres short of the Australians' line. Newton finds Scoffball. Scoffball back on the inside to his captain, Farrell, who is enveloped by three green and gold jerseys. Four metres away. Newton to Deacon. Deacon with a little rubber kick. It bounces off the legs. Oh, it was free for a moment then. And Bergeris did well to tidy up the danger for Australia. Bouncing all over the place. Good option. Little kick through, ricocheted around all over the place. Very slow to get to it there and react. Hands Australia. Lock here to Webke. Big shoulder on the chest then of Jamie Peacock. But there were three others there. The referee shouted held. Webke took the tackle and went down. Maybe Newton should have been penalised there. Last tackle here for Australia. He is penalised now. Stuart Fielder this time. And that was going to be the last tackle for Australia. Silly play there by Fielden. You can see him shoving him away. And Mason, Mason away certainly got to it. Newton yet again. Referee had shouted, held, held before that. That's one against He's walking Brown. a tightrope. It's Terry Newton. Kimali and Mason.
trying to drive it through. Play oh, the ball was stripped. One on one. It was one on one. It's Take play on. The ball was stolen by the British player. That's why it's play on. This is Lockyer and Crocker. Good work from Gleeson there, ball and all, it had to be as well. Fitzgibbon, attacking them again, Fitzgibbon. Well, both defences are so close to each other, it's going to be a kicking game through the middle. This is Kimali, fires the pass to Rickardson! First try, Luke Rickardson. Rickardson from the Sydney Roosters, winning his fifth cap and just scoring his first test try for his country. This series is his Ashes debut. His name's on the score sheet. Put it down to this fella and good referee in one on one. That's play on. Mason was screaming for the penalty. And then they just said, look out this Great Britain side just said, oh, well, it's going to be a, a strong down. Very slow to react there. Oh, and Skullthorpe, he came out of the line. It's been pretty solid so far by the red, white, and blue. But this is very poor indeed. Skullthorpe went out of the one line of defence, left them in no man's land, left a huge gap for Rickardson. Nice course, try. The try was nice from Rickardson, but it all came about after Great Britain had defended stoutly in the Australian half of the field. They were penalised. There was another set of six, and at the back end of that set of six, after the stripping of business and play on, they get over the line for Eddie, the try. Eddie, if you... If you give away silly penalties like Field and that has done, they give them the field position. It's full of talent, this kangaroo outfit, don't worry about that. But you've got to make sure that all the time you're playing down there then. Not in reverse. Craig Fitzgibbon to try and add the extras. And Fitzgibbon does. Wonderful goal kicker, this fellow. Great Britain 2, Australia 6, Luke Rickardson, the try scorer. 30 years of age when he made his test debut for his country, Luke Rickardson. And the man who has made more appearances in first grade for the Roosters or Eastern Suburbs as they were then. 254 appearances in the history of that club for Luke Rickardson. His try, goal by Fitzgibbon, Australia lead in the test, the third test in this Think Road Safety Series. And Sean Long is on the field. He was desperate to get on the pitch last week and wasn't pitched in by David Waite, and he has got an early opportunity here at Huddersfield tonight. He didn't perform well by his own admission in the first test. Well, Willie Mason! He was never going to take control of that football. And a little sly glance. Oh, Barry McDermott's out there as well. You can see he saw Gleeson and Stolthorpe coming in. He's looking at the defence rather than uh, the football. Yeah, that's the error that uh, Great Britain were hunting. Now then, will they provide us with a set piece of the scrum? Deacon feeds, finds Sean Long. It goes wide then to Martin Gleeson. Gleeson plays the ball to Long in a dummy. Good ball wide to Radlinski! Radlinski to the line! He slides over! Does momentum take him home? It's a decision for tonight's video referee, Jerry Kershaw. Radlinski believes he scored. He scored last week's try. And Wigan, that hole rather. It's going to be close this. Do they stop him? Desperation. Just be short. Oh, it's going to be difficult. I don't think they'll get full advantage from this one either. There you go. Too many hands there. Dan. It may be short. They got the hands underneath. So they got a the the ball and dragged it back. The ball at certain points, but they bring them gone back into receiving the kickoff. But it will not convince the video referee. This is the angle that he has to look at. He's close. But does it hit the whitewash? I don't think it does. It's a great Whoa. effort from Trent Waterhouse, number 16. Well, he's got the hand underneath it, pushed the ball back into the field of play. Well, benefit of doubt to attacking side is what we've said all year. Here's the decision from Jerry Kershaw. Ripner on the ball. Radlinski gets the try. It was always going to be 50-50, and it has gone the advantage. 
the speed that long set off from the dummy half position. <laughs> I tell you what, I think we might have been lucky. I reckon we're about six inches short there. I agree. And it's amazing. That replay was not seen, I don't think, by the video referee and on that wide angle there, Eddie. I don't think it would have been given. I think we've been very fortunate there. And Deacon has missed the conversion. Six all in this third and final test. Yes, the, uh, the benefit of doubt went to the attacking side then. So Australia will restart. They're aiming for their fifth clean sweep and a third on British soil. They're playing their fifth international on this ground. Their only defeat was in the first test of 2001 here. Great Britain 20, Australia 12. Six apiece in this one, 26 and a half minutes gone. Britain with a benefit of the doubt video I'm referee try from Radlinski. Little doubt also that David Wade had a few words to Sean Long when he Three came release. off the bench and said, listen, this is your opportunity to show me what you can do. Show what you can do in your country's colours. Yes, because even though David Waite has said that this is his last test match as coach, he will be very involved in the international setup in the years to come. That was a great kick downfield by Deacon. And that's a wonderful chase from the British. Lockyer with nowhere to go. And young Gareth Ellis is on there. And he was the man. Number 17 on his back. There he is again. Involved in his second tackle in the international arena. The first Wakefield man to appear in an Ashes series since Michael Jackson in 1992. Sean, a wonderful night for the Wakefield club and for Gareth Ellis. And it's all square in the test. It's a, it's a terrific accolade for a kid so young to be able to, to, to come on. And, you know, he's such a great utility player. He can play back row, he can play in the centres. There he is doing some work on uh, on Shane Webke now. He'll uh, he'll really relish in this situation. But I'll tell you what, I still think uh, the scoreboard reflects how the game's gone, as far as I'm concerned. Very much even Stevens here. His chances for Australia running it on the last, but they find the touch and nothing else. But there was danger for a moment down the left flank then for Great Britain. Well, I nearly caught Britain Cole there. Work the power play. Britain expecting the kick. Well, they keep it alive. And full credit to them. What about the drive that started this off, though, from Shane Webke? He's had a big series. Oh. Release one. Along with the second rower, Craig Fitzgibbon, he really has impressed me, Eddie. Not just with his kicking, but uh, his ability and his work rate. Space here for Andrew Farrell. Quickly closed down, though, by Waterhouse. Sean Long at dummy half. Good scampering run from Long. No he said got the better of him in that first test at Wigan didn't have the chance to sort out things in the second test so he's got the opportunity here tonight Newton well he's interchanging he's interchanging with the hooker Newton and he's added a little bit more speed at that dummy half kick down the line from Deacon was just outside the 40 meter mark so it isn't a 40 20 it's heading feet here to Australia He's in the 40 there, and just, just out. Yep. Head and feet to the Australians. Good positional kick, though. Just, just a foot the wrong side of the line. Otherwise, that would have been a wonderful attacking kick from Deacon. He won't worry. feet at the scrum to Britain. He won't worry about that, Eddie, mainly due to the fact that he knows that he's got the Australians deep down on their own line, Jeez. trying to force the area. And the way that Russell Smith seriously is allowing, they're not on side. He can't get him back five. He's struggling to get him back five, never mind ten. Well, remember in Sydney, July 2002, yep. Russell Smith was the referee. He got so much criticism for taking them back. Well, we were saying 18 metres, weren't we, the next day? Quicker! Get it! He certainly timed it up here tonight at Huddersfield. This is Fitzgibbon. Still one of the best referees in the business, though, Russell yep. Smith. Kim Orley. Good ball to Webke taking on Ellis again. Good defensive pattern as well from uh, Britain. Quick play the ball there. And this now is the centre Craig Wing. Gets the ball away to Badiris. Here's Kim Morley. Kim Morley's trying to go through the gap of Newton and also Paul Sculthorpe. 
Five. Last tackle here for Australia. Lockyer with the kick off the outside of the boot. That will skim behind Carney. He's got three coming at him, but the ball eventually trickles over the dead ball line. Chris Anderson, the coach, under enormous pressure back home. Will he go home to a job with Cronulla? Will he go home to the dole queue? Will he go home still in charge of an Australian outfit? Uh, the knives are out. Down under, that is for sure. Do they have the dole in Australia, by the way? Sorry? <laughs> this is Newton. He gets the ball away to Radlinski. Radlinski then to Gareth Ellis. Oh, he's away from Wilkie. He's away from another. And that was a terrific tackle needed on Ellis. And Fitzgibbon and Rickardson provided it. It's good now, job as well. Good work from Ellis. Sculthorpe goes wide and... Gilmore drilled into the ground by Kim Morley. Richard Hall. Deacon. Farrell. Chip over the top. Looking for Carney. And the winger, Matt Singh, doing well. Right. Staying the right side of this try line as Lockyer runs it away from Dummy Half. Bit high again from Britain. This time, Kevin Sinfield. Clever kick, though. Beautiful work from Andy Farrell. Big hit there by Sinfield on Willie Mason. No respecter of reputation, the Leeds captain. Fitzgibbon. Sculthorpe stood his ground. And with his new teammate next year, Lee Gilmore, on his way to St. Helens, getting Fitzgibbon to the deck. Kim Morley, good ball wide. Well, this we is often, Waterhouse. We often talk about getting into the faces of the opposition, and Britain are doing that. Good defensive stint here by Britain. Kim Morley, under pressure, but still got it away. Here is Crocker, they're running it, the Australians. Oh, they've got Lockyer there. He offloads, Crocker picks up on the bounce. Still the last tackle, releases the ball, goes forward. Carney will have it back. And that will be the turnover. That will be a penalty. Yeah, That's silly play there from the skipper. And he knows it too. Full credit to the Kangaroos, quite happy to go for the power play yet again, rather than the kick. It shows you the amount of confidence that they've got. Don't complain if you get Simbi on the next defence. Talk to the players, talk them out of it. We've had two or three at least holding down at the play of the ball. We've had a couple of their sides. I've had three or four penalties in reasonably quick succession. Referee's telling down the mark yet. Don't take it to your expect a yellow card if he doesn't brush his side up around the ruck. <laughs> Holy mark, lads. So, Deacon restarts. Here's Sinfield. Just dropped the shoulder, look left, but uh, no one really ready for it, so he took the tackle. Deacon in the dummy half now. This is Fielden. Britain desperate to win this test. A little bit too flat for mine, though, for Britain. He should be standing a little bit further back. There doesn't appear to be any second phase. No dummy run has been utilised either. Long plays the ball. Sinfield. Oh! And it went backwards off Skullform. He's lucky to get away with that. And he finds Ellis. Three or four, Jury. This time, Oosh. big four. slam to the ground. Four. Ellis, four. his head bounced on the four. turf. Got up and played it though to Skullthorpe. A dab over the top, looking for the speed of Carney. Only found the Australian captain, who had to be put to ground by Paul Skullthorpe, who's Another. working hard at marker again. Skullthorpe, good defence from Great Britain. Two. Let him out. Wait, lads. Wait. Trying to frustrate them. Good position. Penalty. Penalty against Great Britain, creeping up to the play of the ball. Well, that doesn't surprise me. Both sides have been trying to get the advantage, but you can see, and even on that shot that there, you can way. see Russell Smith is only back about six or seven metres. Sivan Asiva driving the ball over the halfway line quickly. for Australia. Quick. And uh, Darren Smith has come on, the St Helens player last year, and he makes a bit of history because he's the first man to appear for the Kangaroos while longer. playing for a club in this country. Big night for Darren Smith. Big night for Great Britain. Three. There is Smith. Let's get back, lads. Packing for home, I understand, when the call came. Badiris. Hands off, four. It's his get first up, appearance up. for his country, by the way, in four years. This is Kimali, the magician in this series. He has cut Great Britain to ribbons twice in a row. 
stopped on that occasion. Locked yeah. it, stabbed the ball, looking for the runners. Oh, it bounced it. Ooh, and it was nearly, it bounced up back. But it came off an Australian, so it's a tap on the 20. Problems for Michael no, Crocker. Back and it bounced for. That's Craig Wing. That's Neat pressure Craig kick Wing. yet again. Yeah. And they were hanging around. The loitering was the Craig British defence. Craig Wing tried to knock that back. That's one really. That's why the uh, tap on the 20 metre came Britain's way. Here is Farrell. That's good defence from Australia. Hands up two. Wait, that's wait. Farrell that's playing, uh, defying the pain barrier with that knee injury that blighted his end of season for Wigan. Here is Richard Horn. He was advised the Wigan captain see, that he wouldn't out. do any further damage Richard to the knee off, if he put through this series. That's why he's been out there from start, hopefully to finish. Good ball from Scofield to Deacon. Crocker with a good tackle. Hands up, four, That's four. where they really should be looking for the second phase. Four. And it's not materialising. Here's Gareth Ellis. Five and last, get back. It's the last Come tackle on. here for five, Great Britain. Five. Expect the kick from Scofield or from Deacon. It's with Scofield. Now it's with Long. So he'll put the kick in. They have options in kicking. Great Britain is a good kick too. Trickles its way to the touchline. Once again, good field position. Trying to force the error. That's a steady. Good move as well. The first receiver was Paul Scofield. He didn't get on last week. He landed two goals in the first test, but crucially he Case. missed two. Case. Sean Long. Case. Keep it five. Hang on, hang on, Brett. We're not in. Paul, keep it back clean, Paul Scofield. So Britain will hunt a mistake from this scrum. Australia tried to work it away from their own line. That's good defence though on Minicello. Here's Fitzgibbon, taking the direct route straight up the middle. That's terrific, that's fantastic defence from Martin Gleeson. Good scoot again though from Craig Wynn. Superb play by the centre, Gleeson. He's taken his opportunity, and he really is showing out well there. Well, he had a wild a game against Paul Lance, the Aussies Paul, for England Paul. Day, and that's why, with the injury to Senior and Connolly, he's got his chance here tonight. Good offload. Went, went, went all along the deck. Rickardson hands it on then to Lockyer, and Lockyer looking to offload again, and he does to Darren Smith. And Smith gets them up to halfway on the last tackle. A couple of minutes up to half time. Oh, untidy. Rickardson, Lockyer. Still on the last, and Lockyer with the time and the composure to get the kick in downfield. Wonderful. And Carney will run it back. Wonderful play, that, Eddie. The way that Darren Lockyer just ran around Rickardson to make sure he'd give himself space so that we. Wouldn't be put under pressure. Big Hands hit by two. Darren Smith on Radlinski. Yes, Lockyer, one of the all-time great kangaroos. Here's Richard Hall. And yet again, we have not three. seen a little chip Wait. over the top. Farrell. Four. Very quick to Four. close Farrell down. Australia. Oh, and the British Four. captain is in possession. He's asking Russell Smith for the penalty. Not forthcoming. Sinfield gets it away to Fielder. To uh, Fielder. Last tackle here for Great Britain, five, still inside five. their own territory. Scofford drills the kick down the touchline. Just Entering playing the a, last minute of this first half. Just playing a waiting game, that's all. Britain, quite happy, I'm sure, to go into the sheds. Six apiece. The line to mark, lads. He's on admission. He has not really hit the high spots in this three-test series. David Waite, he knows that his team now have... Uh, gone two and a half test matches against the world champions and they have only had seven points between the two sides that is a terrific recovery bearing in mind the 64 10 drubbing the australians gave great britain in sydney a year last july interesting to see whether australia are quite happy just to close it down going at half time or whether they'll try to keep the ball alive I think they take six all at this point. They will now. This is Lee Gilmore. Gilmore. Lee Gilmore, good run. Oh, Carney. Knock on. They'll bring it back for the first knock on, surely. It doesn't matter anyway, because that is half time. And Great Britain six, Australia six. Seven points. That's the only difference between the two sides after two and a half tests in this thing.
Ink Road Safety Series, but the seven points absolutely crucial in the opening two rubbers, which means, of course, the Ashes have gone west. But Great Britain playing here with bags of heart, bags of spirit, and battling for their pride. They're six all with Australia at the break. Deepin with a penalty, Radlinski with the try for Britain. Rickardson's try improved by Gray Fitzgibbon. Yes, the Kangaroos chasing a clean sweep of the Ashes series this morning, and as was the case in the first two tests, it is plenty. All right, well, this is it. The final half of football for season 2003. Let's rejoin our commentators, Mike Stevenson and Eddie Hemmings. And will it be glory or will it be despair for the British again? Chris Anderson, 20 victories from 23 international matches as coach Two. since 1999. And Bill and Chris have been the men at the uh, dressing room doors looking for the half-time news. Chris with the Aussies, Bill is with the British. Eddie, Great Britain obviously know they are in a great position and that their victory is there for them if they can last the course in this second 40 minutes. And the, the key word really is going to be patience because they are going to have to work for field position as they did in that first half. David Waite wants them to do that in the second, just the same. Force the errors, but really don't try and force the game. It's going to be difficult, made all the, all the more difficult by the fact that uh, there's a very, very heavy uh, dew out there. It's very wet indeed, and it's going to get even more slippery. And stamina is going to be another key thing. And you only have to look at Stuart Fielden to see that. He has been ever-present so far for Great Britain out there tonight. It's a massive effort from him, and it's going to take a similar effort from his teammates. Chris. Well, the key theme running through this tour for the Kangaroos has been patience. They've got themselves out of trouble on a number of occasions, and they did that in the first test and the second test. Gleeson on the break. Back to you in a moment, Chris. Let's see how this attack from Great Britain develops. Gleeson looking for the penalty on the last. Sculthorpe shuttles the ball in field to his St Helens teammate Long. Well, that's a poor kick from Sean Long. Far too deep. Straight back down to Chris. Chris Anderson spoke again about patience. Uh, he was pretty happy with the first half performance. Uh, he did want to tighten things up a little bit. They didn't want to play too, too, too an expansive game too early uh, in the sets. Uh, defensively quite happy as well. Uh, cut out the mistakes. One try slipped through. That was on the back of mistakes. So tie, play a little bit tighter uh, and let's be patient and uh, go right down to Bell. On the injury front, uh, Robbie Kearns, they continue to tell me that uh, they're hopeful he will make a return to the bench. I still haven't seen him. Uh, but they're still monitoring him. Uh, so they are down to 16 men, really. Shane Webke has also been carrying a, a back injury right throughout the tour. It's playing up on him at the moment, uh, so he's not 100% either. And Darren Smith, well, he hasn't played for six weeks, so it might get a bit tight uh, towards that 80-minute mark. Rudlinski has it meanwhile for Great Britain, but another wonderful chase. Vaughan Rudlinski was hit a bit late there by Danny Badiris. Certainly got a swinging arm there. The first half started a little spitefully. Let's hope there's no more of this. Certainly swung one in then and then pulled the arm away, tried to uh, kid the referee. Certainly did that. The surprising thing, though, in that first half, Eddie, is that with the referee not getting them back, not a lot of space between attack and defence, that Great Britain have not utilised that chip over the top that was so effective in the first half last week. Well, it worked a treat in Hull, didn't it? The first 40 minutes was perfect from Great Britain's point of view. Chip over the top and chase from Deacon and company. As you say, we haven't seen it since the half-time siren last week at Hull. Six all here in the third and final test. Good chase from Britain. Let him up one, relate. And all. I think it's a question of fitness, these Australians. They will have partied, Steve-O. There is no question of that early in the week. We're told that since Tuesday it's been back to business. This is Fitzman, but uh, they have trained the house down yesterday from all accounts. And they're certainly up for this third test. They want to go home 3 0 winners. Little doubt about that. You can just talk to Chris Anderson over whether they came over to uh, do the business. They've certainly done it. And he just said straight away after they the clinched the ashes last week, he said, We want to make it three. A lot of people back home, that's in Australia, said that we were rubbish, that we wouldn't win one. He wants to make sure. He can go back and say, we've done all three. Carney, it's a good chase, though. Oh, and that oh, could have been, have been a yeah. against Badiris. And should have been. Crocker over the top as well. Scalfob a little bit annoyed about all of that. Wait. Plays the ball to Sinfield. Here is Mike Forshaw, gets the ball away once again. 
Different style. He lost the ball. He lost the ball. Then. He's not happy with it, Adrian Morley. Which judge assisting uh, Russell Smith, the official, he just lost it. Incidentally, Steve O'Whip, thinking yes. about that video referee decision for the uh, the British try in the first half. There are a lot of people, of course, who believe that you are the man who show the pictures to the video referee. Britain supporters, that is. I wonder what they'll think of that now when you go home to Australia later this month. Well, I'll queue up and buy me a drink, I would imagine. <laughs> For Radlinski's try, I think you might be buying them one. <laughs> I doubt it. And that would be against the green water house here for the Aussies. Hands off, two! A different attacking Quick style play. as well from Britain in the second Quick. half. They switched in and around the play the ball area. They've done that twice. Even a receiver here. Hands off, three! Let him up! Wait! Midway inside the British half of the field. Badiris to Kimorley. Just delaying and delaying. Couldn't get him. Got the ball away by Kim Water, by uh, by a lucky rather to uh, Rickardson. Not much progress made by the Aussies. Now there might be. Oh, that was a knock off. Went straight through the hands of Michael Crocker. Trying to offload in uh, difficult positions. Chris Warren explaining that uh, Chris Anderson said, "Look, keep your composure. Don't Danny. panic." Danny. That's what they've just done. Bit of a warning on the run to the hooker, Danny Badiris from Russell Smith. A little bit excited. Well, I know we have got uh, viewers all over Australia this evening. And Channel 9, our friends and colleagues down there. The kangaroos have uh, again gladdened the hearts of rugby league supporters throughout Europe. It's the 10th straight series win in this country. They lost a series last in England 40 years Ago. They are a terrific team, great ambassadors for the code in the Southern Hemisphere. And we also welcome our uh, viewers in New Zealand as well who are watching this test match live and watching a run here from Gilmore. He's got support down the right hand channel. Scofield, it goes way to Ellis. Ellis with the kick, bounced off the chest of Lockyer. Supporters are long, and here is Forshaw. Offloads to Scofford, he escapes one net. Let him out, let him out. Good job that Brett Kamali went low. Last tackle here, Five. they set a six. Long wants it and gets it. Shuttles it wide to Farrell, takes the return. Dumps the ball then into the arms of Gilmore. A uh, great tackle by Darren Smith. Terrific tackle by the 34-year-old Evergreen. Well, David Wade there, realising that Lee Gilmore did not know it was the last one. He would have been screaming up in the stands to make sure they had the kick to apply the pressure in the in-goal area. That has been a wasted opportunity. Two to me, come on! I'm sure that Gilmore was unaware. Maybe he, like many in the crowd, thought that the referee would have to wipe the tackle count down when the ball came off Darren Lockyer, but you're right, the ball played the man. Badiris gets it away. Watch his head, Adrian. Four and back. Good harassing by Wait. the British defence. There was nowhere then for Craig Wing to go. Kimorley, who has been, I don't say this really, Final so far tonight release. he's been Let quieter than he has been in the opening two. Well, they've shut him down. The defence has been pretty solid on it, apart from a couple of kicks. Well, the Aussies are doing it. Great kick over the top for sure. Grasped up, by Rickardson, back, who was also Get helped out there by Craig Wing. Well, I was wondering when and which side would utilise that little chip over the top. Gleeson, who we thought about the offload then. Just get the impression that a few of the Australians yeah. just uh, falling off the tackle now. And the crowd getting a bit frustrated because they believe Please. the Australians are messing around at the play of the ball and this time the referee the agrees. Good work by Gareth Ellis. Nothing to do with the tackle. Well, obviously you know, worked hard there to Listen. convince Listen. the official. Watch him here. Moving, struggling, getting away, trying to get it. Miltic superbly. I just get this feeling now that Britain taking control. They're building in confidence and they're just making yep. that half break. We are, that's all. What a shame this is not the decider. Morley driving it in strongly. And it was Luke Rickardson, his Roosters teammate, who felt the full weight of that. Sinfield again gets 
the ball away. That's great defence once more. Got to take them on a little bit more from dummy half. Try to stretch the defence. Sinfield is there. Oh, it was a oh. shocking pass to Andy Farrell. He's furious. Well, how many times have we said at crucial points in the, the test series, it's been Britain that have come up with the shock of a mistake. You could not blame the skipper then, and you could see on the face of the coach and the captain. He knows. Great hit by Radlinski. I was going to say, Sinfield's pass it was that was misdirected. Webke's back out on the bench. He's a fairly placid character, David Wade, isn't he? But he has been uh, showing his emotion once or twice in this series. Frustrating, really. So near yet so far for Great Britain in 2003. This is Craig Wing. Well, the British were also stung by the criticism from their opposite Chris Anderson to David Wade that's saying that uh, the British just aren't prepared mentally. They don't know how to win. We know how to lose, sadly, don't we? Yep. This is Kim Morley. There's the little chip over the top. Kim Morley was taken out then, but the referee will let him play on because Morley has it. Second occasion, Anderson has obviously sent the tactics out. They've got to be very careful. It's going to be a difficult time now for Chris Rydlinski. Does he come further infield to make sure and stop that over the top? That's a high one. It's got to be a penalty, and it is. Certainly a high grab by Minicello. Rickardson was involved as well. More of a slap, really. But the referee getting the call from his touch judge. The intent was there. Oh. That's a, a silly error. He put this deep down into the corner. Now then, will they have the second phase? Will Sculthorpe be utilised on this runaround? is 20 metres away as he plays the ball to Newton. Here is Sean Long. Long gets it away to Andrew Farrell. They close him down quickly as they have throughout this series. Newton in a dummy half again. Morley on the charge for the British. Good driving run. Got through a ton of work as Morley. Five metres away. Newton. Newton gets it away to Scotland. He's over. Paul Scotland for Great Britain. He's on the to the Happens so many times. Time up. 
Well, instead of having ball in hand, Great Britain now will have to defend a wave of green and gold attacks. Keep behind the line, lads. Well, Britain have been criticised for many, many years of knowing how to find a way to lose. And if they continue doing that, they will. <laughs> Down to Sean on the sideline. Yeah, Eddie, I wish you'd have come to me before that try because it could have been wise before the event. I was going to talk about the short kicking game that Brett Kamali employed. I think it's very dangerous because when you're trying to just play an arm wrestle with another side and, you, and you're content to just go, we'll complete our set, you complete your set, we'll wait for a mistake. When you start putting the short kicking game in, you're actually giving the other team field position straight away and they're under less pressure. They haven't had their forwards go back and work out from their own red zone. And I thought that really played into Great Britain's hands then. But I'll tell you what, there's two players out there I've got to give a massive rap to. We always talk about the, fate of the great ball players like Kamali and, and Deacon and Sean Long and, and, and Andy Farrell and all those players. What about Stuart Fielden's work rate? Isn't that absolutely outstanding? And the other one from the Australian point of view is the guy with the ball in his hand now, Craig Fitzgibbon. If you, if you measured his work rate over the three tests, it's absolutely outstanding. There have been some really high workers there for both sides. They're going to have another set of six to defend Great Britain. Long carries the ball over the dead ball line with Darren Smith on his back. This is pressure from the Australians. Again, a beautifully weighted kick. The pressure there, but uh, quick thinking by Long. Anticipated quite clearly that uh, he was always going to be the first to get to it. The pressure from Darren Smith. Sean McRae making a good point about Stuart Field and for instance, Steve-O. I don't think he missed a minute of this test series. Stay behind! He's been out there from start to finish. His work rate, magnificent. Yeah. Well, he's a guy that wants to look for it, isn't it? Talking of looking for it, look out for Webb kick. Morley did, and he grabbed him, says the referee. It wasn't a high swinging arm this time. Sivan is Siva. Good driving again, Scofold standing his ground. This is where the Australian four was really after to start to be dominated. But they're hesitating somewhat. You know, if there's one guy that can... Bring it out of the Three, fire for the Australians. It's the man that's playing the ball there, Craig Wing. He always looks dangerous with but, ball in hand. Badiris, Kim Morley attacking the line. That's a great tackle from Morley. Wing again, attacking them. And Wing... And Field and lost the ball, did he? No. Field and gave himself up. It was a high shot. you call. Come here, you. And the referee wants a word. Someone has said out something out of turn to the referee. Fielded, little doubt about that, and you see Fielded gave himself up. Not seen by the official. Mr. Fitzgibbon opened the mouth in the crucial moment. But well, when you see the tackle from the angle behind the sticks, Fitzgibbon had a point. But Royal Britannia is echoing around the McAlpine Stadium. I think the one thing that there's a bit of a high grab by Fitzgibbon on more. The one thing that this test series, Steve-O, has hammered home, I think, more than anything, is that we need a panel of neutral referees for test matches between Australia, Great Britain and New Zealand. Because we've got the tri-series coming up next year. Farrell does well. The only problem is, Eddie, that uh, we can't find so many quality referees. That's the reason why we have to do what we're doing now. New Zealand will have to nominate one or two, Britain one or two, and Australia one or two, and we have the neutral referee. That's a great crossfield kick, Badlinski's hunting it! He looked like he might have been taken out by Darren Smith, the crowd appealing, Badlinski appealing, Russell Smith will have none of it. Great kick! He knew exactly where that ball was going. He certainly brought it across him to Darren Smith. If you both run in the same direction, you can utilize the shoulder. That's the only time you can do that. Seven to see a strong run, not tackled. Now he is. The one thing that Great Britain cannot afford to do, and that's look at the scoreboard and say, OK, we've got six points up our sleeve. They cannot shut up shot. They've got to be more adventurous. Last tackle here for the Australians. That's why the give kick's ten, in the air from Kim Morley. Okay, give him ten. It's a good kick, too. Oh, a wicked bounce. Radlinski with work to do, and the British fullback does it. Not often you find Radlinski in the wrong position, got caught out there. Here's Carney. It's a high kick. Australia know about this fellow. He almost.
got a try late on last week. Two tries on this test debut at Wigan. Swinging arm in. there from Kamali. Farrell didn't like it. He's gone looking for him. Great ball back on the inside. Quickly That's closed down, down though, was Lee Gilmore. And Darren Lockyer standing very deep. This is the time to do the chip over the top. They're quite confident though of Britain. All they've got to do is just utilise the forwards and their strength. Now then, will the kick and chase be good? Long kick. And Lockyer is going to allow it to run dead in goal. Just waited for that ball to bounce a couple of times and skip dead. Britain will be happy with that though. They'll set the defensive line 10 metres away. It surprised me there, Eddie. Why didn't they go for the touchline? Try to force the error. Fitzgibbon, great offload. Madeiras drilled to the ground. Way. Terry Newton and Jamie Peacock. Here's Crocker. He was injured not long ago. Looked as though he might have to leave the field, but uh, hands off too. Hands great off. courage to stay out there. Away, lads. Been good work by the first and second markers from Britain. Darren they, Smith. They really have shut down Danny Madeiras. Minicello always away from Newton. Foreshaw and Farrell harassing him. But he oh, still so gets cool. it away to Kimoli. Kimoli then to Lockyer. And Lockyer, little dummy, got one in the face. Three's a Field and wrapped him. He certainly got to him. And he was it's more of a slap. Didn't seem to me as though it was a fist. Poke in the eye, maybe. Yeah. Just a grab. This Accidental, I feel. Exactly the same kind of thing. Yeah. No, Field and caught him high. Stuck, out. stuck the arm out and uh, no real swing. Quite like the thumb just went straight in. Terry, we've got to be careful that angle beneath. Well, top of his leg, but not underneath. Just about going into the final quarter. There's a thumb. <laughs> third a real poke in the eye. Kim Morley. To be fair to Simpson. Field, and he wasn't looking at the man. So That's he all, anyone? Certainly didn't anyone? appear to be. Uh, Intended. Kim Orley again. Robbie Kearns is back on. Five and last back. Last Come tackle on. here for Australia. Hey. Badiris, Kim Orley, Crocker tries to cut in field, does so. Kim Orley again stabs the ball to the in goal area, and uh, this time it's Radlinski's turn to shepherd it there. Well, he's not been as effective tonight, but you're right, Britain have learned the lesson. Yeah, they shut him of down. The, of the first two. What a shame they didn't close him down last week. Well, the defensive pattern that Britain have showed to tonight has uh, been a lot different from the previous two test matches is that the centres have gone in very quickly. They've forced Australia to play virtually down the middle. And uh, when they do that, a little that uh, the ball gets to the three quarters, but yet again, Britain appear to be quite happy just to grind their way through with a six-point lead. That's maybe the right tactics, but they can't just hang on. Uh, he just wanted to get away with it, and get on with it, try to catch this Australian defence. But yet to be fair, they were also pulling at his jumper and pulling at his collar, trying to stop him, stop the momentum. And there was a lot of that last week that went unpunished. Here's Robbie Kerr. The thing is, Eddie, though, that when you hold a lead, That's one. you play safety first. You don't, you don't try to force it, try to get... Collision with Two. Fielden. That's been one of the great battles between the prop forwards, Fielden and Three, Webke in this series. Let him up. Here's Kimoli. Not the best pass. In fact, that's probably the worst pass Kimoli's put in all season, and his coach, Furious. Just to nobody. I think that Michael De Vere could do about that. So mistakes are plenty. Remember, Bill Arthur mentioned just after half time that uh, the dew on the turf out there. Pretty heavy, so it's a uh, slippy ball. Mistakes were expected. In fact, I think both sides have done a great effort with playing with the ball, but it, it is really wet out there. Then. Hands up, two. Big hit on Peacock. 
Barry McDermott running straight at Darren Smith. Three, come on. McDermott, Let him on. He's got uh, 17 and a half minutes or so to stamp his authority on this test match. Farrell. Hands off for Jason, come on. Newton and Peacock just over halfway five. on the last. Five and last, five! Here's Skullfall. Shape to kick, gave it to Gleeson. Gleeson, oh, releases the ball wildly. Carney, though, has it. And Carney will hand the ball over the top. Minicello's under it. Okay. And Minicello will attack. The ball wide. This is Max Singh. Screams for a forward pass from the terraces. Poor play by Britain there, though. They really should have got themselves sorted out. Make sure that there was a major kicker there. Carney, very speculative, just, just hoped, didn't he? Simpson drives Oshiller over halfway. Three tackles gone. Lockyer, Webkey, flick pass. And it's play on. Oh, Richard Hall had that. That went backwards. It's going to be back to zero. Australia have it. The ball went back. And it was off Richard Horn, the knock on, so Australia have another set of six. And here they come with Lockyer. And this is Willie Mason. Oh, great work from Gleason there. He's had a great test match, Martin Gleason, so far. And Paul Sculthorpe is injured in back play here as Britain defend this attack. Just jogging his way back into the line there. Looking a bit groggy as well. Caught one in the face. Simpson is round one, can't get away from Fielden. Australia now trying to do the switches, running the angles. Watch for the inside pass. Kimali. Kimali shaped a pass inside, took the tackle from Forshaw. Four tackles gone, two remaining. This set of six, Willie Mason. Tries to scamper away from Forshaw. That's the last. Surely the, waits. surely the kick into the corner of the left field. Kimali to Lockyer, they're running it. There's the kick. Radlinski ties up bravely. Killing boots everywhere. Give him a medal. Sensational positioning there. Two, oh, that's a big one. hit from Wenke as well. Look at the positioning there of Radlinski. A lot of players would have gone for the option of just kicking the ball out. Brilinski went down for it. Sheer courage, that'll lift the British. Sean, it's up the tempo for Great Britain, isn't it? Yeah, they're, they're, they're playing remarkably well. I think they've, uh, their speed of line of defence has really put a lot of pressure on the Australian side. What I'd le like to see improve is what Andy Farrell's just done. I thought the kicking game in the first half was very, very good from Paul Deacon. But noticeably, he's been off the field for quite a while now, and it's left up to players like Andy Farrell and Sean Long. And I don't feel that the Great Britain kicking game has been quite as sound as what it was for the first 40 minutes. They haven't they haven't been made to pay for it yet, but they might do if they're not if they're not careful with it. I think uh, Australia, on the other hand, are getting to that stage again where everybody would expect them to play catch up. They probably won't though. They'll probably just go through their structure and play the way they've always played and just try and chip away and uh, and put some pressure on the Great Britain side. Ball bounces and Lockyer picks it up. Dan Lockyer flooding forward. Here comes Robbie Cairns. And he is all down by Terry Newton. Quick play the ball though. Britain stretched in defence. Kim Hawley again. Kim Hawley again. Rickardson wrapped up by Long. Oh, over the top to Kim Hawley. Kim Hawley then to Simpson. McDermott was hunting in. He's found Willie Mason. There are holes all over the place here. Webb K. Switched it up, just lacked the concentration at the vital moment. Get square one. Britain, two minutes away from victory. Carney. Well, the obvious ploy now is to make sure that they get back into the Australian uh, half and then go for the one Drop point. Three. Drop a goal this week. Wait, wait. We failed to do it last week. Well, it would mean, crucially, that the Aussies would have to score twice. But most importantly, that their heads would go down. Well, we should, we should, Great Britain should have gone for the one point last week. This is good hands. Oh, no, it's not. And this is Craig Wing. He stumbled, but he still managed to get through the defensive line. Oh, the 
shot on the blind side. Here's Kimali. Now it's Rickardson. Here is De Villa. Let him up. Right. And Australia with a ton no, of shot. tackles left are three metres away. Kimali, Simpson. Simpson is grasped to the ground. The dearest waits. They miss out Mason and find Kimali. Here is Lockyer. They go wide to Crocker. To Crocker. And he's almost over. Bradlinski stops him. What a shamosla to play the ball. And Britain are going to be penalised. They'll take the tap. They won't worry about going for the two. They know the clock's ticking away. Surely they won't go for the two. They look absolutely out on their feet, Great Britain. Both sides do any. They're going for the tap, they're looking for the try. Kimoli, Wenke! Got him up one! Another angle run. Wide. It's wing! All hands to the pump for Britain hey. now. Two! Hey. Lockyer, Kimoli, Mason. To the ball standing. Hands up, be moving to make some impact away. against the defence. Smothered by the British. Wing to Kimoli again, drop of the shoulder. Newton wouldn't be fooled then. Four. Good work from the hooker. Wasn't going to take the dummy. But not in the two, uh, two tests. Complaining is Kimoli to the official. He should be getting on with it, really. Look, yeah. Ooh. Final lost. Oh, I thought he lost the ball for a moment. <laughs> Surely the kick. Last tackle here for Australia. Kimoli. Short ball, Minichello, and Britain survive. Terrific. Stand up, take a bow. The pressure that they're under, it's been superb. They're trying to get themselves motivated. Captain Courage is this scene. Hang in there. Carney. Plenty of time. You've got to share the work now. That's one. That's why Carney took that from Dummy Hart. This is Scott Ball. Wait, look. And 260 tackles by Great Britain, 200 oh. for the Australians and Barry McDermott with perhaps, perhaps a fatal error and he knows it. Out, lads. That's pressure. Nothing wrong with the pass at all. Just when you need it to Isn't calm that? things down. Hang on, Brett. We've cut with the oh, error. And we've Stay already Mike, seen the quality Stay of this Mike. Australian attack late in this game. This is Kimali from the base of the scrum. This is Michael Crocker. There are some very oh, tired oh, young oh, men out there oh. on both sides, as Steve O'Reilly says. Wing to Robbie Cairns. Hands off, two. Come on. This is Willie Mason. Willie Mason pumping his way towards the line. On your line. They're halfway Wait, through this set line. of six. They're a metre away. Craig Wing. Brett Kimali. Darren Lockyer. Misses out Rickardson, finds De Vere, and Minichello wanted it further wide, he would have been in. Good tackle from Sean Long. Lockyer, Rickardson. Well, they're using the second phase well of the Australians. Last tackle here, Wing will dart for the line. And Wing is denied again by Heroic. Great Britain defence. They've got to feel the pride pumping through their chest. This has been an amazing effort by Great Britain over the last three or four minutes. Talk about being on the rack. No, no mistakes. Carney, grounded, for sure. Australia have used all 12 changes. Great Britain have got one left. So Australia go for the last eight minutes with what they have out there on the field. Britain have got one change remaining. And this is Gilmore. Hands off. Had a big game, oh, Gilmore. Yes, he's Come played on. well. He's a utility wait, wait, wait. player, playing the forwards, and uh, certainly acquitted himself well. Richard the Horn. The combination between Martin Gleeson and Lee Gilmore has been Play superb. That's good field position. It has to be a good Five. kick. It's Scott who hammers the ball downfield and finds touch. That's wise play from Paul Scott That's what's needed. Eats up the clock. Yep. But it turns the kangaroos around and you can see both sides not rushing to form this scrum 
And that is Great Britain's last change. Morley returns for McDermott. So the players out there on both Mike, sides Mike. will have to see their country's home Mike. now. Mike, stay in. And they've got seven minutes remaining. Well, obviously, David Wayne has to make gone. sure that they don't come up with an error like Barry Mike. McDermott did. Mike, Got to play safety first. And they are hunting now, looking for the mistake from the Australians Get inside ball. their own half. Here's Fitzgibbon. Well, the Australian Please. players and Australian ball, coaches ball. have always prided themselves on saying that it's defences that win you the games. And it certainly has been a wonderful effort by the men in the white shirts tonight. Wing. Here's Willie Mason. That's good defence again from Farrell and Forshaw. Kimorley! Kimorley! That's hit! It's, it hit Forshaw, so it's play on. Simpson to Fitzgibbon, who hammers the ball downfield. That's a terrific kick under the circumstances. Carney will run it back for Britain. Only as far as Robbie Kearns, and Darren Smith could have been done for a flop then. Here's Radlinski. See Australia tiring, struggling to get into the first and second mark, and that's the reason why Ridlinski got so much ground forward. Now this is the time where it's up your jumper. Don't worry about finesse. Position. Skullthorpe. Back it goes to Peacock. Willie Mason. Scrags him to the ground on the halfway line. Sinfield at dummy half. Peacock has had a huge series as well, by the way. Long. That's a poor, poor kick. kick again from Sean Long. His kicking has been awry in this Think Road Safety Series. They really should have gone for touch yet again. Kick Saw the composed kick from Paul Sculthorpe a few moments ago. Mason driving the ball hard and up the middle. They're always capable, especially from deep, from within their own half. The Australians have uh, producing some remarkable rugby league football they've done it for years and years five Three minutes release. of this 2003 series to go and on aggregate just one point between the two sides Went back. but three. it's the Australians who are looking with wing and that was touched now then it's going to be back to zero Guys. 
Darren earlier today from one Johnny Wilkinson. And I just wonder whether it will be a drop goal that will settle this third Think Road safety test match here in Huddersfield tonight. Well, put my hand up. There is the man who could kick the goal, but of course he can't come on. Great Britain have used, like Australia, they've used all their subs. I'll put my hand up and say, Sean Long, well, salvage it. How ironic would that be? The man who kicked the winner in the drop in the grand final last year for St Helens. Oh, that's a poor pass to Lockyer, but Lockyer turns a mess into an attack and he keeps it going. They're still going, it's Kim Orley. He's got tears with it. Kim Orley waits. Lockyer, Lockyer, they're going to win it. Richardson, oh, Great Britain will lose the series 3 nil. Richardson with his second try. Would you get Luke Ricketts and scoring the first and last try in a test match? He could have a thousand with me. Hadn't scored a try all year and he's come up with two tries in this third test of the Ashes Tour. 